What is going on Dragon Ball fans? Welcome back to another Dragon Ball Q&A session today where we have lots of awesome questions to go through. We are nearing Christmas by the way, so in case you guys have any sort of question to ask me, drop your questions down below. And of course, if your opinion differs than mine, simply comment down below as to how you guys feel and pertains to each and every single question because again, each and every single question applies to you guys as well. And I do want to say thank you all for tuning in and thank you all for watching the video. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and also help leave a like down below if you guys love Dragon Ball. And again, I do want to apologize if I don't get to your question guys I have lots of lots of questions to answer so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be breaking these down I'm actually gonna be making more videos very soon uh, more q and is coming so if you guys have any sort of Dragon Ball related question to ask me simply drop your comments down below so without wasting any more time guys let's go on ahead and begin with our very first question of the day which is from God's child Alex as much as I love your channel I've never heard you talk about what if the wives swapped roles that's very actually I, I think I spoke about that once uh, so it's time for me to be the first to ask about it. All right, question number one. What if Goku married Bulma? What if Goku never fell in love with Chi-Chi and instead had something with Bulma and they got married? How different would Dragon Ball be in your opinion? Question two. Do you believe that relationships in Dragon Ball are the best suited for each character? Krillin slash 18, Gohan and Videl, Vegeta and Bulma, Goku and Chi-Chi, Roshi and everybody. <laughs> Question three, uh, what ran through your mind the day you saw Bulma die in Dragon Ball Super? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for your questions. Now, um, to answer your first question, for those of you who've never seen Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball show, um, I, I, when I first saw it as a kid, I always thought that Goku had a thing for Bulma because when they were younger, uh, we see Goku taking off Bulma's panties. We see Goku slapping Bulma by the tush and stuff. We see Goku doing a lot of stuff to Bulma, like physically touching her in inappropriate places. So I always thought as a kid, like, all right, these two are going to get married because um, it seems like they have a very dynamic relationship. But I do think that over time, after Goku fell in love with Chi-Chi, it was best suited for Goku because he never really felt that way about Bulma. Like, I feel as if he never truly had that passion for her. Um, and after after Goku met Chi-Chi in Dragon Ball, like, that was very good because we see Goku's demeanor change. He was always a little shy, and we see how Chi-Chi, she was adorable. I mean, they were best suited for each other. But what if Goku actually married Bulma instead of Chi-Chi? Well, looking at how Bulma treats Vegeta, Vegeta isn't really that grumpy anymore. He's not grumpy. He's not dissatisfied Bulma takes him out to vacations and stuff where as opposed to Chi Chi you know she has to force her husband to work because he's lazy so can you imagine if Chi Chi forced Vegeta to work as she did with Goku like that would be like a really domestic ass relationship um so I think that if Goku married Bulma Goku I I don't I don't want to say he would be complacent but I think Bulma would kind of get sick and tired of Goku always wanting to train similar to Vegeta but at least Vegeta like he goes out and he does stuff with Bulma I don't think Goku would ever do that as seen with Chi Chi when Chi Chi wanted to take him out to learn how to drive when she wanted to take him out grocery shopping and whatnot Goku always makes up this, this excuse so I think that if, if Bulma were to do that uh, Goku would again make up excuses and stuff and I think that their relationship wouldn't really click however I I think that Bulma would definitely go out of her way to build Goku um, similar technologies to Vegeta for to put to use. For example, the gravity room. I think that Bulma would go out of her way to probably help Goku go, like get stronger over time as well. Um, I really doubt that Bulma would be selfish, but I don't think that their relationship would kind of click because if Bulma were to ask Goku to do something or go on vacation or do whatever, Goku would come up with every sort of excuse in the book to get away from that whereas opposed to vegeta we've seen in dragon ball super even so far he's been sucking it up and just dealing with it so i, I really doubt that goku would deal with that uh because every single time chi chi forced goku to do something it's like he always came up with an excuse because he loves to train that that's goku's thing he always wants to train he always wants to fight so i don't think that that relationship would necessarily work itself out because I think that Bulma would get really angry at Goku. And we see how Goku's always complaining about Bulma. He's like, oh man, like she's worse than Beerus and stuff. Like he's always poking shots at her. So um, I don't really think the relationship would work out, but I think it would be a, very, a really intriguing relationship because uh, Bulma would force Goku to do certain things and Goku would want to do that. Um, and I think that, I mean, it, it would change Dragon Ball drastically, but to me personally, I can't see Vegeta sticking around with Chi Chi. Like Chi Chi just seems so bossy. Um, now, to answer your second question, do I believe the relationships in Dragon Ball are best suited? Um, 18 and Krillin. Well, Gohan and Videl, yes, because uh, having a look at how they started off in high school and whatnot, like, I, I guess, like, they're, you know, high school sweethearts. So, that relationship clicks, for me at least. Um, Goku and Chi Chi also click because Goku and Chi Chi have loved each other when they were kids. So, Goku always had a thing for her, but he never really. Um, you know, I had a, had a good way of expressing that. So I think that relationship also clicks as well. 
18 and Krillin, Krillin went out of his way to do so much for 18. Like, he, uh, like, even during a time when 18 was supposed to be killed by everyone, like, everyone wanted to see her dead, he, he, he stuck his neck out, and he was like, no, don't kill her. Like, I, I have a thing for her. Like, I love her. And he's very bold for that. He's very bold for standing up against people that wanted to kill her. So I think that that relationship is also best suited, because I, I can't really see 18 with, like, Goku or Vegeta or Gohan. Vegeta and Bulma, again, I think, uh, clicks as well, because... They balance each other out in a way. Whenever Bulma has a loud mouth, Vegeta shuts her down. And of course, whenever Vegeta gets crazy, Bulma shuts him down. So I think that relationship clicks as well. Roshi and everybody. Roshi loves everybody. Roshi is the neighborhood perv. So I, I think I think it's best suited to put Roshi where he at, where he's at now because if he was in a relationship, God knows how domestic that would be. Um, because Roshi, Roshi's just he's hypnotized by the booty. Like that's it. Like he's hypnotized by the poontang. So it's like Roshi can't really do much because like that's. That's his shtick, he, he's the perv. Now, to answer your final question, what ran through my mind when Bulma died in Dragon Ball Super, um, I really thought, in my opinion, that it was best needed. I think that it, it, it turned the story that much more dramatic, and it made everything that much more intense. Um, certain people were just like, oh man, no, she's not gonna die. But I knew right from the get-go that once Goku Black was introduced, they had to do something to future Bulma in order to establish Goku Black's relevancy, and they did, by having him kill Bulma, and that was a, a surreal moment because nobody ever expected, um, you know, for that to happen, so when that happened, I felt bad because here you have, you know, the mother of, of her son, and she's trying to help her son, and towards the end, having to meet her demise by a person that she has known her entire life, or at least has a familiar look with, it's pretty crazy because the person that she... Um, you know, first encountered looking for the Dragon Balls, you know, her first friend per se, Goku, um, you know, was the one that killed her off, was kind of surreal, so, um, I, I think it was a, a really dramatic moment, and I think it was best needed, I mean, I felt bad in a way, I was like, damn, like, that's, that's hardcore, um, but I think that it was best suited at the time. So once again, Mr. God's Child, thank you so much for the questions, and I hope you have a terrific day, my friend. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Raging Bratchy 300 at Unreal Anti Gaming. Hey Alex, I've been watching your Q&A videos lately, and I wanted to see if I could have some type of questions answered. Plus, great job on your live streams. Thank you. Keep rolling in that good content. Thank you, man. All right, uh, I believe this is question number one. Ultimate Gohan, if he trained up to dates versus False Super Saiyan Blue Future Trunks, who do you think would win and why? Uh, question two, I believe, if Gohan didn't break his arm. Uh, when he protected Vegeta, do you think he would have been able to beat Perfect Cell? Question three, how do you think Zamasu would react if he saw Majin Buu? Question four, I believe, do you wonder what happened to Frost after the third arc? Uh, thanks and have a nice rest of the day. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day as well. Now, to answer your first question, Jesus. All right, um, this is tricky. This is really tricky because here you have Ultimate Gohan, who you say never stopped training and here we have false Super Saiyan Blue Future Trunks. Um, honestly, as much as I love Gohan, I think that I'm gonna have to go with Trunks on this one because there's something about Trunks in the previous arc that emitted greatness, and he was able to stand up against Goku Black, Zamasu, and merge Zamasu, a fusion. So um, he was able to conjure up and create the energy and formulate that in the Spirit Bomb, transfer that energy in his sword, and cut Zamasu in two. I don't think Gohan would have been able to do that. And I also think that the forms are very different as well, because here you have Ultimate Gohan combating, you know, false Super Saiyan Blue Future Trunks. So I think that whatever form Trunks had kind of trumps Gohan's form, because it gave Trunks the ability to stand up against an immortal and survive. So, uh, for me, I will have to go with, you know, Future Trunks because I think Future Trunks would have certain abilities and certain tactics that would work against Gohan. Although Gohan would have his potential unleashed and all that good stuff, um, there's something about Trunks that screams out resiliency, and he's, he's very durable. I mean, as we saw with Goku Black, as we saw with other characters, this dude does not give up. Like, Trunks does not give up for nobody. Um, he could have died a long time ago, but he had the willpower to continue on. Not saying that Gohan wouldn't, but in my opinion, I think Trunks takes the cake. However, if you guys, of course, disagree, um, let me know in the comments as to why, because I'm very curious to know your thoughts on this, because for me, I'm going to have to go with Trunks. Um, but then again, even if Gohan were to train up to date, he would be really fucking strong. He would be really, really strong. Um, but I don't know, like, there's something about that form. If we're talking about regular Future Trunks against regular Ultimate Gohan, then I would have to say Ultimate Gohan, but having to look at how strong Trunks has gotten, having to see in the manga how he was able to compete against Goku, 
I'm gonna have to give the the, the win here on, for Trunks because there's something about him that again screams resiliency. Now to answer your second question, if Gohan didn't break his arm to protect Vegeta, would he have been able to beat Super Perfect Cell? I would have to say yes. I, I truly would. I think that if Gohan never took the hit and bit the bullet for Vegeta when Perfect Cell came back, uh, if Super Perfect Cell fought Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, I think Super Saiyan 2 Gohan still would have won. Because at the time, despite the explosion, I mean, yeah, Cell gained the huge Zenkai boost, but he wasn't near the fucking capacity of Super Saiyan 2. Keep in mind, Gohan's powers were cut in half severely after that attack, so... Um, and, and he still was able to blow back Cell with that Kamehameha wave, so I think that towards the end of it, if Gohan were to stick around with his Super Saiyan 2 form, I think he would be able to smash Perfect Cell, no problem on that one. If you guys differ from my opinion, just let me know in the comment section below, uh, but I'm gonna have to go with SSJ2 on this one. Um, question number three, how would Zamasu react if he saw Majin Buu? That would be interesting, um, because Zamasu would ultimately deem him to be a, a simple mortal as well, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because that, that's how Zamasu rolls. However, it would be really interesting to see Zamasu try to attack Boo, and he cuts Boo in half or whatever, and Boo regenerates. Like, that would be like... Because I, I wonder if Zamasu would then call him immortal, because, you know, even even during the Majin Buu saga, Piccolo and, and Vegeta, when they first fought Boo, they were like, what the hell is he, immortal? So, um, even though Boo isn't immortal, uh, I would love to see Zamasu's reaction. I, I think that ultimately enough, Zamasu's reaction would be, oh... Well, such a creature siding with humans is, you know, an abomination in my eyes. So you are deemed to be destroyed just like everyone else. So I think that Zamasu would look at Boo and say, you know what? Since you're taking the side of humans, you don't deserve to live. So I think that Zamasu would ultimately try to gun for Boo as well. But uh, I, I would love to see Boo absorb Zamasu. Like, how awesome would that be to see Zamasu be absorbed and, uh, you know, Boo to transform? But then again, I mean, I think that he would have the mind of Zamasu as well, so that would be even worse, having the mind of Zamasu inside of Boo's body, like, that would be a, a really bad idea, but again, that, that all depends on which version of Zamasu you're talking about here, now, to answer your final question, what happened to Frost, um, now, there's a part of me that wants to say that Hit killed him, because Hit really did a number on him, like, after Hit, you know, stopped him from stealing, like, that was it, like, Frost was laid out on the sofa, like, he, was, he wasn't moving, like, that was the end of him, so I, I want to say that he's dead, but at the same time, killing's not allowed, so I do want to say that he's alive. And I think that ultimately enough, what had happened was Hit knocked him out really badly. Um, but I do think Frost is alive. However, um, if he's dead, then that's really, really unfortunate because I would have loved to see what Frost can do furthermore in Dragon Ball Super. But if he's dead, he's dead. As they said in Rocky Four. if he dies, he dies. Um, but I, I, I think that he's alive. I, I really think that he's alive. Um, but he was just really knocked out because why would they drag a dead body back to their universe? It makes no sense. Um, and, and, like, and like, how, like, where would they even dump him, in, like, to begin with? It's like, I, I think that probably he woke up once they went back and, uh, he went back to his old business. But I, I don't think that he's dead at all, to be honest with you. But anyways, Mr. Raging, thank you so much for the questions and I hope you have an awesome day, my friend. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Sky Slayer 8 Hey, Alex, I love your vids. Hope this makes it onto your Q&A. Hopefully you reach 300k soon. I mean, if YouTube wasn't messing up, then yeah, it would, but thank you so much. Hopefully enough, we can reach that by the end of the month, guys. Let's see what happens here. Um, that, that is December, of course. Thanks to hear my questions. Question one, do you think transformations like Ascended Super Saiyan, Ultra Super Saiyan, or Master Super Saiyan will make a return and God key form in Super? Question two, do you think Vegeta will ever kill a main villain? Ha! Question three, um, what if Black and Zamasu are still alive somehow? Let's just say they pulled a cell on us. Um, and so do you think that there might be a part two to Goku Black and Zamasu arc? Question four, do you think Hit will actually kill Goku in the next arc? Question five, what if Goku and Vegeta fuse in the Frieza saga in Dragon Ball Z? Let's say the earring uh, were still permanent. How would Vegeta fare against Frieza compared to Super Saiyan Goku? Are you serious? Holy shit. Um, Broly question. Oh no. Legendary Super Saiyan God 2 versus Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegito. Do you think Broly uh, can get another movie in Dragon Ball Super? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for the questions now. I'm going to go in order here. So to go to, to answer your first question, in terms of Ultra Super Saiyan, Master Super Saiyan, Ascended Super Saiyan, um, making a return in the form of God Key and Super, I think it's possible to do. I don't see why not, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because there is no reason 
for Goku and Vegeta to push themselves to an Ultra Super Saiyan or an Ascended Super Saiyan God. I think that if anything, they're going to try to reach a new level instead of pushing the ones that they have now. Although it would be cool to see, you know, Mastered Super Saiyan God or Ascended Super Saiyan God or Ultra Super Saiyan God. Having those concepts be embedded in Super, I don't think it's logical. And quite honestly, I, I think I, I think Akira Toyama forgot about those forms, so I, I don't think he'll be adding them. So to answer that in the short term, I would say no. To answer your second question, do I think Vegeta will ever kill a main villain? That's a good question because I would love to see it, but do I think it's going to happen? No, I don't think it's going to happen because I don't think they want to give Vegeta that spotlight because thus far... It's been Goku, with the exception of Trunks and the Omni King. So Trunks wasn't the one that fully killed off Zamasu. It was the Omni King. So the Omni King was the one that erased him. Um, so even there, I mean, we have Goku as the hero. And we have the Omni King as a hero. Um, but I mean, do I think Vegeta will ever kill a main villain? That depends. I mean, that depends if Vegeta gets his revenge on Hit um, and knocking him out during that tournament, and he he ends up killing Hit in the next arc. I mean, who knows? I mean, anything can happen. Um, I mean, would I love to see it? Absolutely. But do I think he's going to kill a main villain? Um, as of right now, there is no clear-cut indication that he ever will. So I'm going to have to say no on that one. For now. For now, at least. To answer your third question, is Black and Zamasu somehow alive? Um, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, did you not see what, what the Omni King did? He wiped out the entire universe. Like, there was nothing left. It was just nothing but white. So, um, it, like, if, if there's a chance that he might be alive... That would be really, really interesting to see because it's like, all right, well, how the hell did he survive? Did he manage to go somewhere else? Did his uh, evil sky form manage to go to a different timeline or something? Like, who knows? Um, would it be cool to see? Absolutely, because those two have a very, very good dynamic. Um, I would love to see them separately, however. I don't want to see them fused again because their fusion didn't really cut it for me that much. Um, I much rather prefer them when they were individuals, but do I think ultimately there'll be a part two? Not in the least, bro. Not in the least. To answer your fourth question, do I think uh, Hit will actually kill Goku? Well, that's the thing. It's like Goku has never actually died in battle. You know that, right? Um, the only times he's ever died was sacrificing himself. He sacrificed himself against Cell. He sacrificed himself against, um, you know, Raditz. So he never was killed in battle. Like, nobody physically ever killed him with their own two hands. Um, but do I think Hit's going to kill him? I mean, I think now so more than ever... It's actually time to see Goku die. It's time to see Goku die because if Goku were to get killed, I think that'll create a, uh, a situation to where it's like, holy shit, our top guy is dead. What do we do? And I think it'll create lots of tension. I think it'll create lots of drama. And obviously not having him come back one day, that'd be, you know, essential as well. Uh, but in terms of Hit actually killing him, I do want to say probably because Hit knows of certain techniques and tactics how to take someone down, so I don't think Goku can actually like avert that. I mean, it's it's tricky because Goku's gonna hold his own until he dies, but do I think Hit's actually gonna kill him? I I mean, sure. I I think it's time for Goku to die, just for storyline purposes at least. Uh, to answer your fifth question, Vegito versus Frieza, Vegito stomps easily, easily even during that era. Vegito stomps Frieza easy, no problem. And to answer your final question with Broly, I'm gonna have to give it to Vegito. I'm sorry, but Vegito's powers would be way too much for Broly. Even if Broly was a Super Saiyan God 3, whatever the case may be, um, my money is definitely on Vegito. So, anyways, Mr. Sky Slayer, thank you so much for the questions, and I hope you have an awesome day. And once again, I do want to say thank you all for watching this edition of Dragon Ball Q&A. If you guys have any sort of questions to ask me, drop your questions down below so I can feature it in episode 22. Again, I want to say thank you all for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for tons of Dragon Ball daily uploads. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to slap a like down below. Show your support for Dragon Ball by leaving a like. Uh, and also, again, guys, if you guys differ from my opinion, uh, just, you know, drop your thoughts down below. I'm, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on these questions. So, as always, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have a blessed day. If you guys are unaware of my vlogging channel, be sure to head on over to Unreal Vlogs and check that out, guys. I post lots of awesome stuff that I don't get to post on here. So, make sure to subscribe to that channel as well, guys. Thank you all for watching. Tune in for more, and I'll be seeing you all during episode 22. Take it easy, guys. Peace.